And hello everyone, my name is Jackie Ryan. I'm um, a potter and a teacher of, of ceramics here in South Galway. And um, so I'm delighted to be here and I want to thank um, the Crafts Council and Get Ireland Making for allowing me to um, come into everyone's home and help them be creative in clay in their own homes today. Um, so yeah, so during COVID, I had to leave my studio. Uh, my studio is in our Drahan and County Galway. So I, I just brought home some materials and tools and I set myself up here in my own house. And uh, I've, had a, I've had a lovely time creating and, and making things in clay. So I'm delighted to be able to share with you today some, um, some, some hints and tips on, on making your own little bits from air dry clay um, at home. Now I'm using this stuff today. It's um, air dry clay. I got it in Art and Hobby and in Kriegel Art in Galway. So um, even if you don't have this stuff today, if you just watch what I'm doing, you'll, you'll be well able to, to do it when you can get your hands on this. Or if you're very adventurous, you can make your own air dry clay. It's called um, cold porcelain or air dry clay. Um, and you can just Google um, or, or go on Pinterest or somewhere and see how you make that um, at home. But um, this, this stuff is really nice to use. So this is what we'll be using today. So um, we'll just be covering some basic forms of pottery. I'll be showing you how to make something like this, which is a little vessel. Um, I'm using the white clay today. You can also get this uh, air dry clay in you know, in bookshops or in art supply places, and sometimes even have it in supermarkets, um, in the toy section. You can get it in this red clay or this white, but I do, I'll be using the white clay today because you can then color it yourself. So like, I'll be showing you how to make this later. So this is a little leaf dish that I made out of this white air dry clay and I painted it. So that's, you know, a little dish, keep my little things in there. Um, it's not food safe, so you won't be making a bowl for your cornflakes. Um, but they're just little dishes and little hanging decorations and ornaments that you can make for yourself at home. There's a little hanging decoration. Uh, so let's just get started. Let's get our hands dirty and you will get your, your hands dirty and you might even get this stuff on your clothes, but it washes off. So don't worry about that. So this is a bigger pack that I was using earlier. And when you open the pack, you'll see that it's this quite um, loopy stuff. So let's make a pinch pot first. So you simply just grab some of your clay and pinch it off. If I'm going too fast, or if, um, if you have any questions along the line, just pop them in the box there and Shauna will relay them to me and I can answer. So you just pop off some of the clay. You'll feel it kind of sticky in your hands. If it's too sticky, you can use this stuff, corn flour. Um, you can get it um, in the shop and you just cover your hands with the corn flour, but it's not necessary. Um, it's, it's not too sticky. So if you, Went, I'm just going to point down to my hand so that you can see me working. So if you looked at your list to, um, to join the webinar, you would have seen to get a, a tea towel. So this is a tea towel that I have down here. It's just because this stuff sticks to wooden surfaces and metal surfaces. So I'm just rolling a ball of clay. Okay, maybe you've done this in school or, or, or you've done this before. And I'm going to support the little ball of clay in one hand and with my other hand I'm going to stick my thumb right in through but not through to the other side and it will have, it will have stuck onto my thumb okay so with one hand supporting and my other hand I'm going to be making a pinch pot so we're literally just pinching and turning pinch so I'm pinching with one hand and turning with the other hand so I'm not pinching like this I'm pinching like this, more like a, a, a duck shape rather than this shape. So I am pinching and turning and pinching and turning. And your thumb won't be stuck in there anymore because you'll be making the hole bigger. And this is the beginning of your pinch pot. One of the oldest forms of pottery. Cave people probably sat around a fire with some mud and 
you know, formed, formed these little bits of clay um, and then decided, well, we could use this as a vessel. So you just keep pinching. Again, I will be finishing off these today and telling you how you can do it yourself, but you'll probably be playing with this stuff long after I've left the internet today because you can just keep finishing these, refining them. So what I'm doing when my pot is a little bit bigger, I'm just going to look at it and I'm going to make sure that the walls are as thin as the base. So I might need to do a little bit of pinching there. So my thumb is down inside and I'm twisting and pinching. You may see that you're getting um, these kind of um, veiny bits on it and the top might look a bit raggy, but this is all about refinement. We can refine it later. Once you have your pot, we're then going to do this motion. Okay, so with your thumb on the inside pulling up, so your fingers are supporting on the outside, your thumb on the inside is going to be smoothing out, pulling. It's almost like it's pulling a little bit, a little layer of the pottery, of the clay up towards the rim, okay? So we'll just keep doing this for a minute, turning and pinching. You can see my fingerprints there on the outside. And that's okay. It's nice to see your prints. And if you don't like them, we can smooth them off later. So turning and pinching. Supporting your little pot all the time with your supporting hand and these fingers. So there's your little pinch pot. A little pot that you can keep little bits of Lego or your jewelry or, or something in. Again, like I said, it's not waterproof unless you want to give it a coat of varnish or something, but you know, it's just nice to keep, keep in your room or on the windowsill. Okay, so that's your little pinch pot. Now to refine it, because that rim, some people might like that rim. It has little, um, it's dry, you see, because this is air drying clay. My hands are warm, it's sucking out the moisture. The air is warm, it's sucking out the moisture, so it's drying quite quickly. So what we need to do is uh, just refine that rim. You might do this on the outside as well, just to make it smooth. So how does that feel for everybody? Um, holding this clay in your hand and smoothing it out, making a little pinch pot. So I can carry that on. I made a little pinch pot earlier and I put these little feet on it. There's nothing to stop you using these as an egg cup. You know, if, if you're um, for your hard boiled eggs, they'd be quite, quite cute. Um, but it's just wet food, you know, um, or, or, you know, milk or tomatoes or anything. That, that just wouldn't be food safe because it would suck out some of the clay onto your food. But something like an like an egg would be fine. So then what you can do is you can take your little pot and you can tap it on the table to get a flat base. Just tap it down. Or I did ask um, on the list if you could get some stamps or just something with a bit of texture. Now I have some wooden stamps here. I use these all the time in my studio. They're just blocks of wood that have um, interesting patterns on. You may not have anything like that, but you may have something like this um, for printing with ink, or you may have things like this. They're, um, you get them in little sets. They're just little sets you're using in your, uh, for, for printing. So this is just, it's just a bit of text. I got this in, in Tiger Shop or somewhere. So I don't know if you have anything like that. So there's my initial and I can now, on my little pot, I can press my initial into the base. Don't know if you can see that. Okay. I did ask you to get some textured stuff as well, some lace. I have some um, crochet here. Uh, this is a, 
this is a, a mesh, like a doily, or some of this, um, which is textured wallpaper. It's just a little bit of, so it's basically something like this light fabric that has texture on it. So I'll just show you what I can do with this. I'm just going to put it over my little pot and I'm going to pinch in the texture into my pot. So I'm always looking for little bits of texture, even on sometimes on your jumper, you've got some corduroy looking stuff or placemats at home sometimes have nice texture. So you can see how that little pot now has some very interesting finishes on it. If you really don't like the rim being wibbly like that, you can just get a scissors at this stage and snip it off if you wanted a nice flat top. And I'll show you the difference now. Sometimes when you're finishing in clay, and it's, it's true of the clay that I use in my workshop as well, the clay in my workshop is, is clay that I fire in the kiln, not air dry clay. So can you see that now? I've just flattened off the top with the scissors. So I suppose you all have a little bowl of water and a sponge. This is a little washing up sponge that I've cut up into little pieces. And you can just use a wrung out sponge to finish off that rim, to finish off your piece. Now, like I said, you can be doing this for the rest of the day because this will dry a little bit before the end of the day. And then maybe this evening I can come back and it'll be a little bit firmer and now I can use my sponge again and I can sponge around the edges, around the base and just make sure that it's all smooth and lovely. So I can keep coming back to this. I showed you a little pinch pot where I added little feet. So little feet would be three little balls of clay that I picked off and rolled into balls and added on. And this is one that I made. Um, can you see that there? So it's a little pinch pot on top that I've colored pink on the inside and I've gave it a little stand and it is a little bit stately. That would be a nice little egg, egg stand, wouldn't it? So I'll show you how to attach things. So the air dry clay, you can use some PVA glue to attach your pieces or simply just water at this wet stage. So I'll show you how to do that now. Let's just say I'm going to add three, you can add three or five little, little feet. So I'm just rolling it around and making little balls that are, that are kind of equal. You don't, you don't have to, you know, three little balls that are kind of equal. So when we're using air dry clay and when we're using any other type of clay, to, you can't simply just squish them on and hope for the best. They will fall off. They need to be stuck on. So this is where your knives come in. If you've got some, a scalpel or a craft knife, um, where you're going to attach them. So let's just say I'm going to attach one here. I need to cross hatch where I'm going to attach them. So I'll hold this up to the camera now again in a minute. So I don't know if you can see that. I've kind of, it looks like I've ruined the lovely base on my pot, but I've really had to scratch. I've really had to muck up that clay without going too deep, without getting into the pot. I'm just really mucking up a little area. And again, on the little balls that I'm going to add, again, I'm just really going to scritchy scratch all over that. It doesn't look too pretty, but that's really going to help it attach. And I'll do it to this one and this one. And then you get your water with your sponge or, or a clean paintbrush. And I'm going to really move that water around it's going to get really slippy and squishy. I'm going to do a bit more cross hatching and then I'm going to twirl it onto my pot. I'm not going to shove it in. 
because that's going to muck it up. And that fell into my bowl now, but here we go. Twirl, twirl, twirl. Your hands might be a little bit wet with that, so you can dry them off. So twirly, twirl, 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 twirl. And then that's my pinch pot finished. They're falling off. But believe me, they will stick on as the day goes on and the, and the water that I've just applied dries. This little pot will, the, the pot and the little balls with the help of the water will eventually stick on to one another. Okay, so that's a little pinch pot. And again, like I said, you're probably not finished with this. Um, you can come back later after the video and you can refine the edge a little bit more. You can add more texture. You can put stamps on it. Um, you can decide that you want to make bigger feet on the base. So, um, so that's your little pinch pot. So just leave that aside. So that's a very important thing that we were doing there, adding one piece of clay to another. Um, we'll be doing that again in a minute and I'll show you um, the next thing that I'm going to show you to do is something like this, like a vessel. It's ex I'll be showing you how to make this exactly the same way that as, as I use in my studio to make vessels. So this time we need a bigger piece of this clay. So I'm just going to open up my packet for any questions. Anybody got anything about the pinch pot or just let Shona know and she can contact me. So I just have a clay knife. You may have had a paring knife or something you may need an adult to help you with this. I'm just going to cut off a section of this clay. Got a good chunk there now. We're going to make a big a bigger vessel. Um, so this is ready to roll out into the flatness now so that we can make a vessel. But I'm just going to just prepare it because it's quite hard. It's been sitting around in that um, in, in its packaging for a while. So I'm going to use this part of my hand and I'm just going to make a pancake out of it. Turn it in your hand and give it another squash. Just waking it up really, letting it know that it's going to be something beautiful by the end by the end of our making so it's just kind of just flattened it slightly okay and then you put it on your tea towel again we're using the tea towel so that it doesn't stick to the plastic table or the wooden table and hopefully you've picked up a wooden rolling pin as well um, I have them in my studio all different shapes and sizes it's not a good idea to use a metal or a plastic or a ceramic rolling pin because it's going to stick to this. If you don't have a wooden rolling pin, the insert from a cling film or tin foil will do. Um, you'll just have to work it a little bit more. So the rolling pin, how we roll clay then, we need a long strip of clay because we're basically going to um, wrap it uh, around to form a vessel. So how we use, um, how we do that is, so I've got my rolling pin. I'm not going to roll up onto it. I'm going to put my rolling pin on top and just very gently roll it up to the end and back. Okay, I'm not doing this because that's going to form ridges. It's just a very gentle roll up and roll back. Okay, then once you do that once, you pick up your piece, you turn it upside down, and you, and 180 degrees, I think that is, and you roll up and you roll back and you just keep doing it that way. Okay, the reason we're doing this is because we want the clay to spread out evenly. We want the crust of the clay to spread. We want a nice block of clay or what we call a slab of clay. So I want quite a long piece of clay, so I'm just going to roll it up. And you can do it as thick as you want. I'm going to roll this quite thin because I want to get a few pieces out of this block of clay. Um, so I'll just show you with this. This works just as good. So it leaves little marks in it, but you can take those out later. So can you see how 
my slab of clay. It's gone from a quite a chunky block into this lovely slab of clay. And it will rip if it gets, you know, if it gets too unwieldy, it, it, it will start to rip, but it's, it's fairly robust. You can just keep going with it. Um, this is quite nice to use actually, this thing. So just very gentle. Again, try not to do the fast rolling like you would with cooking dough or something or pastry. We're just going to make something really, really lovely from this piece of clay. So that's my piece of clay. It's a nice slab. It's like icing. In fact, I do use icing tools and cutters and I'll show them to you in a minute. Hope you can see me there. So I'll throw it this way so I'll, I'll show you. So I've got a nice slab of clay. Um, so I'm going to texture this clay while it's flat. So it's a good idea that you get your texture down on your slab of clay while it's flat. The table is going to help you by pushing up this side and your rolling pin is going to roll some nice texture in there. So if I just show you what I use, this is a doily um, and I, the texture side I'm going to put down, okay? And then I might use a little bit of this textured wallpaper, texture sides down, okay? So you come along with your rolling pin or this and you roll it into your slab again just gently and you do it every which way if i just went up and down there now it wouldn't take the texture so i need to go back and over diagonally as well this piece is moving now so it's going to be very different so come back so that's left slightly bit of texture but you can see this Kind of stuck onto the clay but I'll show you as I peel it away my clay has taken the texture I'm going to work with that also the little tools or the little stamps I showed you earlier or if you wanted to do a pattern yourself you know if you just get the back of a paintbrush and you can just do some patterning on there. Um, I have this little stamp, I'm just going to press it down, give it a jiggle, peel it away and it's left a lovely mark on there. Okay, so bear with me, there is a, it is a process. I've cut out a little template because this, I'm going to cut the clay into this shape because once I have this shape one piece is going to attach to another and that's how I'm going to get my vessel shape. But you don't have to have a template, you can do it freehand for now. So I'm just going to place this here on my on my slab of clay. Can you see that? So the this is going down onto my slab. I'm going to get my craft knife. A ruler might help. I don't have one here, but you know, I'm just going to cut through my clay. Now, cutting through clay, again, like the rolling, you're not doing this. You're going to get jaggy edges if you do that. You're just holding your knife like this, not like this, like this and it will just slice through and just take your time. It doesn't have to be fast. And again, down here. And again, this way. I don't know what, I'm just going to do that freehand because I don't have, I don't have my ruler. So, this is my leftover clay. I'm going to use that for something else. When you're working with it, you know, you can, you can kind of loosely fold it like that and put a bit of plastic over it, okay? Because we don't want that to dry out too much because we'll be using that in a while. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, 
so that's another tip for the clay you know like this one i i used a little bit and i and i i want it to stay fresh it will stay like this for a year you know a year or more um fold it over and i and i'll put it in one of these baggies and seal it up or a lunch box or something and that will keep that will keep for a very long time so coming back to my big slab i've now cut this shape okay so can anybody remember what we do when we attach one piece of clay to another so basically what we need to do is we need to attach this bit to this bit so that we have a nice roundy vessel okay all i'm going to do with this now this is a bit fancy and a bit advanced but you don't have to do this i'm just going to flatten out one side because they're going to fit inside each other we don't want them too thick but I'm just rolling pins on the table and it's just going to roll up gently a couple of times onto one side or you can flatten it with your with your fingers and i'm going to flatten down here too so basically you just look at your slab you decide which is going to be the top or the rim and which is going to be the base one side is going to fit inside the other so obviously you're not going to see this the side that fits in so attaching one piece of clay to another what did we do yes we got our knife and we cross hatched so the bit that's going to fit inside the other side Sorry now if that's confusing, but you you know what I'm talking about when I when I do it. Cross hatching here. It looks like I've really mucked it up, but I'm just cross hatching there, and I'm going to do a bit of cross hatching here on the inside. So obviously, if this works, this is going to fit inside this bit. So this bit then needs to be cross hatched. Again, it's better to do it on the flat. I'm being fancy. I have a special tool that I use. Um, some people use forks or um, if you've got a really hard old toothbrush, that might do just as well. You see that now? That's really, really, um, you know, it's just damaging the surface really. Okay, then I'm going to come along with my bowl of water. I'm going to use a paintbrush or you can use a sponge or you can use your finger, whatever it is. And just on one side, I'm just going to apply water. Really get that water onto the surface of your clay. And over that, I might do a little bit more cross hatching. So what's that doing is it's pushing the water into the bit that I want to glue. And then stand it up, twirl it around. This is a bit fiddly. So you're just going to marry the two of these together. So you're just going to press in. Sometimes I like to do this with the rolling pin. So how we do that is we get it back onto the rolling pin like this, okay? So it's onto my rolling pin. And I'm going to look at this little seam and I'm going to roll over it. Again, all of this takes time, so just, and it's a bit fiddly dee, but you'll be able to do it. So I'm going to roll back and over there a few times. So there, that's my, my vessel. Now, what's it missing? It needs a base, doesn't it? Because if this is going to be, if this is going to hold my, my knife and my paintbrush, I need, a, I need a base on there. So you come along and you get your leftover clay. Remember our slab? If you don't have any leftover, if you've used your whole slab to make this, that's fine. Just roll out some more clay. Okay, so I think I'll get my base off this little bit here. So I'm gonna take those bits away. Don't throw out these little bits. These can be squished up, okay? put into your bag and used again so there's no waste with this you can use every single bit that you've got so i might roll this tiny bit thinner this little bit my vessel is going to fit up on top of there okay so again i told you we'd be doing a lot of this attaching one bit of clay to another 
how do we do that? So this is my base. I'm going to get my scratchy tool or my knife or fork or toothbrush. And there'll be lots and lots of this today and when, when, when you use your clay again. Really just cross hatching. This is called scoring. You score and you slip. Or what we're doing today is scoring and just using water to make a glue. In case that's really messy. Looks like I've ruined it, but I haven't. And then I'm coming along and I'm going to drip some water. I'm not going to get the body of it wet because that's just going to make it all floppy. Just around the bit that I've been cross hatching. And I might just for good luck do another bit of cross hatching and poking and fiddling so that it can really have a good chance of sticking. If I was to pick this up, I'll pick it up like that, but I'm going to flip my hands. Okay, so I'm going to stand up for this. So instead of picking it up like this, I'm going to pick it up like this so that I can turn it upside down and onto the bit that I want to make as a base. Okay, a little bit of tapping. Okay, a little bit of this kind of thing. Make sure it's really stuck. And then you get your knife and you cut around it. Again, not, don't rush it. I'm just going to cut around. Okay, I'm going to move this away. And remember to keep it under plastic because we'll be using that in a minute to make a little dish. Okay, so now we have a vessel. Has anybody managed to do that, I wonder? It doesn't look great because the base looks a bit raggy, but what you can do is you can come along with your finger and just kind of pull up like this. I'm going to make sure that the base is really stuck. You use your tea towel because um, your, the clay isn't going to stick to that, okay? So tap, 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 tap. And I'm just going to smooth that away. I have special tools that I use um, for this type of finishing, but you can just use the back of the paintbrush. Okay, so this little wooden bit on the paintbrush, you can just come along and just make sure that that's well attached. Again, you're not going to be putting water in this. It's not going to be holding any liquid. You can put dried flowers in it, but not, not flowers and, and water because it's, it's just, it's not going to hold it. Um, and it might actually turn, turn your pot moldy on the inside as well. If you've done it, maybe on the inside, you'll see that it, it looks a bit um, unfinished. So you can just use your, I'm going to hug it on the outside so that the wall doesn't collapse out so that's the thing about working with clay you just it always needs a little bit of support especially when you're using tools okay so that's my little vessel okay so you'll see that the back has a seam this is where the overlap happened um, i always leave an overlap on my vessels in studio but some people just don't like that so again i'm using a bit of leftover clay i'm going to roll it in my hand and i'm just going to flatten it okay i'm going to use my knife or i also have these cutters you can get these in um, Mr. Price or Tesco's. They're, they're actually for icing. They're little cutters. I use these in the studio the whole time. This is a cookie cutter. Actually, I might put a heart on this. So I'm just going to use that little ball of clay that I rolled up earlier for the leftovers. Again, 
remembering to keep turning my clay, keep turning it as I'm rolling. No matter how big or small the piece of clay you're working with, you must keep turning it after every roll or two rolls because it's going to stick. It's going to stick to your rolling pin and it might stick to your tea towel and you don't want that. So let's just say I use my cookie cutter and I'm going to press down and cut this little heart shape. Okay. It needs to be my dog there letting me know somebody's coming. So I just cut a lovely little heart. So the same kind of, these same cutters I used for my little, um, my little hanging decoration. So again, I'm just going to use a damp sponge to soften those edges because where the cookie cutter cut into the clay, it's left it a bit crummy. So just doing this. Everybody's very quiet. Are you still there? Are you very hard at work? So there's a little heart. I'm going to attach it here just to kind of disguise this a little bit, but also just to add a little bit of interest. Again, can you remember one bit of clay to another? Cross hatching. It looks like I'm absolutely ruining this now, but believe me, you need that much. You need that much um, cross hatching to really allow your piece to attach. A little bit of water, paintbrush, it's all getting really mucky and floppy. So I'm just going to add it, give it a jiggle until it until you can feel that suction and that it's sticking. So a little jiggle. It's best not to press it in. If I press it in, I'm going to um, destroy the shape. So I'm just, this is the best way back and over, back and over, back and over. It's just giving it a really good chance to attach. In fact, I might move that up a bit because uh, it'll disguise the fact that I've got a little cut up there. So just to let you in on a little secret, most of the things I make in the studio always have a little bit of a mistake in it or a little rip or a little tear. And I always do things like this to, uh, to disguise, but it also adds interest. So that's a little vessel. So the ones I made to demonstrate is actually smaller. Um, this clay does shrink, but not by that much. Um, this was just a smaller little slab of clay that I cut. So if you're using templates, then maybe you can cut them from the newspaper or just an ordinary piece of paper and just decide how big you want it. So this was just a smaller piece of clay. You can see I added one of those cookie cutter flowers. There we go. I use that. Put the base on. So that's a little vessel that I can keep things in. Um, this one, like I said, is bigger. Um, it could probably be more serviceable for my, for my utensils, pencils, whatever. Um, you can add your name to it. Hi, Jackie. Sorry for interrupting. Just Hi, Shauna. We're getting some really nice feedback. Everyone's following along, which is brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. Well done to everyone and we're getting a lot of lovely comments saying how interesting it is and um, it's great to see that everyone is able to, to keep up. But oh, that's again, brilliant. Yeah, and brilliant. And if anyone has any other questions, just let us know. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I'm delighted you can keep up. I'm, 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 I'm glad the pace is, is useful to you. Um, again, just another finishing thing for your vessel, and you saw me doing it there while Shauna was speaking, just onto, because this is porous and it has a nice pattern on it, just to finish off, I can roll, and you might need an adult to help you do this, I'm just rolling on the seam where I've just detached. If this was much bigger, I wouldn't attempt this because I might put my finger through the vessel and it will tear but it's just helping again to just finish off that scene. Now, 
I am so looking forward to seeing all your vessels and your pinch pots. Um, and please, if they collapse or your finger goes through it or, you know, squish it up. Squish up that clay, start again or use some more clay because, you know, this is, I've been doing this for years and this is, this is how I've developed. So um, for me, it's about just being creative and you guys being creative as well. There's something really nice about working with clay. Therapeutic. A lot of my, my students tell me it's their therapy. So again, what I'm doing here now is I'm just finishing off my rim. I don't have to do this right now while it's wet. Again, I might come back to it after dinner. Um, this evening, this will have firmed up. You'll feel it will have firmed up. You might not be able to move it anymore. You know, you might not be able to do that anymore. Um, and you saw me shaping it there. Experiment with shapes. You don't have to make a round vessel. But I'm just finishing off just a really wrung out sponge. There's a little bit of dampness on it, but it's just softening that rim, just making it nice and soft. So what have we done? We've done a pinch pot, lovely white pinch pot, lovely white vessel. I'll be showing you in a minute how you can color these. I'm just going to leave these to the side and really quickly, just one more thing I'm going to show you to make. So this is a little dish, just a little dish. I use it to hold my earrings. You can see I've got some nice soft pictures. I'm there actually delighted you're showing that, Jackie, because we had a request could uh, oh. to be shown the saucer. So it's fantastic that you're showing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just well, it, again, like my vessel, you can use depending how much clay you use and what bowl you use to form it in. Because we're going to use a bowl to to make this shape. Oops. Um, it depends on how much clay you use. So today I'll probably use this size because of my leftover clay in my slab. If like me, you rolled a big slab of clay, you may feel it starting to go off. You know, you'll feel a little crust coming on it. So I wouldn't be able to use, you know, maybe in an hour's time, this might be too hard for me to use. So I'm going to use it now. Or like I said, you can leave it like this and wrap it up really well in plastic. Double plastic would be best. And it will stay like that for a very long time. So I've still got some of my lovely pattern on here. And I would go with that. Sometimes, you know, when people make vessels or, or dishes, they, they really want to control where the pattern goes. For the first few times you make it, just make the big slab of clay, use it as a canvas, fill it with texture and then form your pieces because it's actually really interesting. So you can see here, there's a little flower there and I'm going to use that for my, for my dish. And that's, that's, a, that's a surprise. So I have cookie cutters that I use for, um, for this. I can't see them here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut um, a rough circle myself even though I don't have a very steady hand, but you could use, you know, you could use a bowl or something to cut around, but, or you can do a square. A square dish is quite nice. Um, let me see if I have a cutter to hand. Nope. So I'm just going to cut into the clay with my clay knife again, not holding it like this, not doing this kind of thing. I'm just going to, this is, my finger is helping me stay steady. So I'm just going to cut a roundy bit, or not a roundy bit. Do you know, things are really interesting when they've not got a proper shape. So when you cut your shape, or you might use a big cut, cookie cutter, or um, again, this is, this is another dish, little dish that I made. I used a bigger cookie cutter heart shape and it's just a little dish um, that you can you know, give to somebody or, or again use for your earrings and things. So how I made this little dish is like this. So um, I can fix the edges like I did before with the, with the water, but this is quite thick. So what I might actually do is I've got some lace here. It's just from a top 
had a really nice top and there was a little bit of lace on it and I said you know what um, I don't want to wear the top anymore I'm going to use the lace in my pottery so this is um, just a little bit of doily lace there and I'm just going to pinch the edges to get, make it interesting just flatten out those edges and should just give it a nice finish again if you didn't like what you did you get your knife and you cut it or I can snip with my scissors okay so I'm just gonna that's more like it snip off the bits don't throw these away you will be able to use those so just on the edge I'm just finishing it off so I've got a little flat bit of clay now this is a plastic bowl I use this in my ceramics all the time but it's just a snack bowl or a cereal bowl porridge bowl um, this is plastic you can use ceramic so you can use your ceramic bowls you're not going to damage them so um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit this into the bowl leave it to dry and it will take the shape so that's how i did this one it just sat into the bowl like that i left it for i think a day and then i was able to just pop it out and it had taken the shape um, if you're using ceramic or plastic you may need to use that corn flour you know you just sprinkle inside with corn flour especially if you're going to be pressing in your clay there is the slight possibility that your clay will actually stick you can see that that's stuck there now to my plastic and it is hard to get off um, these type of things so this isn't very big now but i'm just going to gently press it in I'm not going to go go at it like that. I might even use a dry sponge. This is a, a dry sponge here, dry washing up sponge. And I'm just pressing all around it until I can feel that my clay has taken the shape of the bowl. Okay. Now I could I could have got a bit of clay a little bit bigger to make a, a, a substantial bowl. That stays like that. Maybe in the morning I'll be able to pop it out and it will have had its shape. This is one, this is one I made. Um, so this is this is hardened. This is one I got a leaf. So like I showed you how to roll in the clay, roll the lace into the clay. I got a leaf. Okay, I'll just show you how to do that just in case um, get your your slab of clay. And it's the textured side of the leaf, not this side. So like ivy leaves don't work really well because they have very little texture. So just get something that has a lot of texture on it. Lay it on your pottery, on your clay. And again, remember, you roll it back and forth and diagonally to really get the benefit of all of that texture onto your clay. So that's what I did, got a big leaf, rolled it in, cut very carefully around the shape. And then I put this into, I um, can't remember, I think I've got a big soup bowl or something that I, 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 I left it inside and it took the shape. So I've got this lovely leaf dish now. Um, and again, it's in the white clay, but I'm gonna show you how to color this now. So I'll just show you this little one. This little one was a, it's actually from um, a, another leaf, smaller, cut around it, put it into a bowl. So you could have a series of these ready. You'd like to have something else for breakfast in the morning if you're using all your bowls for, uh, for this work. So yeah, so that's just a little leaf. I colored this one green. <laughs> So that's your making, um, your vessel, your pinch pot and your dish, depending on how much clay you use, depends on the size of the piece that you get. I think that's what I wanted to do. I'm just going to check my list. Um, 
Ah, yes, so text. I wanted to show you some text. This is a leftover bit of clay. I'm just going to roll, roll it a bit flatter. So if I'm going to add my name onto something, you wouldn't use the same thickness as you used on your piece. Um, I'm just going to use uh, some text. So I don't know if you have these. If you don't have these, then you can carve in your name. You'll see as you, you know, if I wanted to write onto the clay, if you're using something like this or a toothpick, it does leave uh, some crumbs, but that can be sanded off at a later stage. So you can use a toothpick to write your name or um, you can use your text. I don't have a full word here now, but these are little stamps for text. So if I just go give it a jiggle and add it. Okay, so again, just like the texture of the leaf and the texture of the lace, your clay really takes up that texture well. And then I'm going to just cut around that. And can you remember how you add one piece of clay to another? So maybe with my dish, before I, I, I let it take its shape, I might just add some words. You know, I might just add my name. So again, I would cross hatch, use my water, and attach it there. You know, you could put somebody's name there, put granny, nana, granddad, whatever on there and put it into my bowl, it'll take its shape and that will be, that will be on there. All my little bits, I'm going to take them and squish them together. I'm going to ensure that I keep them in plastic because I'll be able to reuse that. If you find that your pieces are completely dry, completely dried out, then you need to break it up into small pieces, put it in the pot, add water, and over the next few days mix it to a paste and then just let it dry and you'll eventually get another bit of clay. I don't know how we're doing for time there Shauna. I'm just going to show you quickly how to paint these things. So when they're wet, if, you, if I added paint now it would just bring the clay up with it and it wouldn't be suitable. So um, you can see that I painted this green. Hi Jackie, just to give you a time check, we're just coming up on an hour, but I think Ooh. everyone is still with us and really okay, loving good. it. Um, you know, as I said, if anyone isn't able to stay for all of this, we are recording it, but I think they'd be more than happy to see you colour away. So keep going. Great, Shona. Thank you. I'm just going to show you how to do some colour. And then I have a few other bits that I want, I want to show you after that then, that, uh, just some ideas. So I think you're going to be at this for the rest of the week. I think you, this clay is going to be on your shopping list, definitely. Um, and it's a great little pocket money thing to buy. So the mums and dads and grannies and granddads don't have to buy it. It's, you can buy it for yourselves and you just get loads out of it. So this one here, I just use poster paints. So these, I got them in Mr. Price or, um, you know, you can just get them anywhere, really. I did have a green, but anyway, look, at, I'll go with the gold. Um, get yourself a little palette. I just have a little lid here. Squish out some paint. Um, I'm not going to add much water, but I will. my brush will be kind of a bit watery. Um, and I'm just going to paint it on. So another few things, just before I forget, another few things with the finishing. Um, this is an emery board, or you can get some, um, some soft sandpaper. Sometimes when you've been using your knife to cut the clay, it leaves little crumbs. And also, like I showed you there with the toothpick, if you're writing something on there, it, it takes off little crumbs. It's impossible to get them off when they're wet, so don't even try. And with this, with this when I was cutting into it you can see there's all quite sharp edges and um, so again when it was wet and then the day after I came along with my 
wrung out sponge, but it didn't quite do it. So I'm now going to use an emery board and I can just soften those little sharp edges. Try not to breathe this stuff in. It's, it's, it's not good for you, but you know, if you can do this outside, all the better. Just a little bit of, of sanding will just finish off those edges nicely. Then you can do your painting. So I'm painting on my gold. I'm just going to show you in a small part of this. I could do gold here and then I could overlap it with another color. So you can see how the texture is really taking that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get another wrung out sponge. This has to be really wrung out, not too much water on the sponge. And again, we're doing this when the piece is hard. I would say give it a week just to make sure that it's really, really hard. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking off the top layer of that paint. And you can really see it go into the texture there. So although it's really interesting to see it with this, I'm just going to move this slightly, to see it with this thick paint, this thicker paint here, it's really interesting. It's actually really nice when you just, you paint on a layer, you know, a good thick layer as you would, but then when you sponge it off, you can see it's going into the texture of the leaf. And I mean, you might, you might not think that, but I think that's a little bit more interesting than just painting it, um, than just putting on a big thick layer of paint. So I'm just going to show you the finished. Because I've added water to it now, it's actually going to be, it's, it's going to soften it up slightly. So I need to leave it for another day or so, so that it takes, so that it hardens up again. So that is a nice leaf. So I showed you my little pendant that I made. I'm also thinking about making some jewellery with it. So this might be a little pendant that I can put on some string. So again, you can see how that's two pieces of clay. There's this roundy disc. Um, I'll show you how to do the hole now in a minute. And then I have a cookie cutter, butterfly cutter. And I stuck that on there with the water. So that's a quite nice thing to do. So I need to show you how to make holes in it. Um, your clay at the stage when it is being rolled out and you're cutting it, cutting your little shape with your cookie cutter. You need to take it off gently. Like I showed you, you're going to have these crumbs around the edge that can be softened with your finger or a sponge. And then if I want you to hang that, I've got a straw here, a plastic straw is best, um, but we can reuse this again and again. So hopefully not too bad for the environment. You leave it down on the surface and I'm going to twirl the straw as I push it in. So twirly, twirly, twirly as I push in and twirl as I pull out. So you can see it's just taken a little, a little plug of clay out of out of there. Don't do it too close to the edge. If you do it too close to the edge, it'll rip through. So that's how you make holes in it. So um, you can do hanging decorations, earrings, um, that kind of thing. One more thing I want to show you, and I, again, during COVID, I just thought this was a really nice idea. I just have some brown card. Again, I got it in the craft shop. And this is um, a piece of air dry clay and I used my text to write sending hugs and a little bit of lace on the side and I um, so it was on a slab of clay and I cut around it let it dry so it's nice and flat I'm just going to stick this onto the card now and I can post this it's really light um, 
I would just put a layer of bubble wrap around it if I'm going to post it. Um, this is PVA glue, a little bit of PVA glue. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, don't, don't be too precious about it. Just move around the PVA glue or the Gorilla Glue or the Super Glue. And again, I'm just going to attach it to my card with a jiggle just to make sure that it sticks. It might need half a day to dry and to stick, but that's a nice idea as well, just to send somebody a card uh, with a little handmade pottery bit on it. You know, you can buy brooch backs, you can buy earring backs, um, bits of string for your necklaces. And in our house, we're big fans of Playmobil, but sometimes we don't have the have the proper things that we need that day you know you can make a little house you can make a little mound or if this is a little pinch pot instead of using my thumb to make the pinch pot i used it like this little pinch pot dried it for a couple of days and this little playmobile lady now has this kind of dish so it's just some ideas there for you i can't really um Think of anything else I'll just leave the products out here that I've made if you have any questions um, thanks so much Jackie yeah anyone any questions just write them into the chat and um, we're getting some lovely feedback everyone's seeing especially the cards and sending hugs how nice an yeah. idea that is yeah and you can get this text I've seen it in the supermarket you know or um, tiger shop or pennies sometimes have things like this they're really cheap and they're just and you can use them for ink, but they, they work really well in the clay. Um, so if you want to, uh, I have Canvara Pottery. I have a Facebook page or an Instagram page. Um, you can see my pottery bits there behind me. I, um, I, I make my own earrings, um, but you can make your own earrings now with this, and it's really light. Uh, it's, it's perfect for, like you say, posting on cards or wearing or... Um, but I, I, I really like these vessels. They're just so handy, you know, uh, just for storing your little bits in. But yeah, if you just remember those few, few rules of not, not allowing it to get too wet or, um, you know, they wouldn't really be suitable for toothbrushes now in the bathroom, but you can have it in your room with pencils and pens. Yeah, and I'm so looking forward to seeing all your creations. So if you can share those, I'd be delighted. I might get some ideas for my own work. Thanks Jackie. Yeah, no, we were just asking people earlier on if they could send in some photos. Our email again is getirelandmaking at dcci.ie. Uh, we'd love to see some photos and we could share those on our social media and on the Design and Crafts Council website. I've Great. just put in your website as well, Jackie, for Canvara Pottery. So that's oh yeah, <laughs> it hasn't been updated in a very long time, but yeah, it, it, if you wanted to email me with questions or whatever, I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So um, the email link is in there on the website anyway. Yeah. Lovely. And we've got a couple of questions. So actually, some really nice comments. Everyone's just saying how wonderful a teacher you are and that they really enjoyed it. And lovely creative ideas. One person is asking, how long will the clay be dry? So I don't know if they mean how long does it take for the clay to dry or? Um, this will last forever. Once it's, once it's dry, unless you, you know, you can break it up into little pieces um, and, and regurgitate it. I think it can go on the compost heap because it's, um, it's, it's an organic thing. Do check that online. I'm, I'm not too sure about that. I know my own clay can, can be composted. Um, I would, something big like this inside your bowl will probably need to be left a couple of days. You can just keep checking it. Just, you know, just keep coming back. The vessel that you made today or the pinch pot that you made today, if you come back this evening at about half eight, nine o'clock, you will have, it will have firmed up slightly, but not so much that you can use it. I would say tomorrow, the day after, it will be dry enough to then start painting and using. And again, once you paint it, it needs to dry out for another day or so. So it's, it's a process. You know, you'll have a little, a little workshop going somewhere. Um, and you can just keep keep making stuff like that. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. And that actually answered my next question, was, which was uh, how long uh, to wait until they can paint the pots. But as you said, just perhaps a day or two. You know. When it's dry, you'll know when it's dry, it'll be lighter than it is because what's actually happening to the clay is, you know, this is still wobbly because I just made it a, a few minutes ago. It's, it, there's a lot of water content in this clay. It's not heavy, but it is heavier than it will be when it's dry. So when it's dry, like this little one, it's really light. Um, it's almost like cardboard uh, and, and it's really dry. You, you know it's dry when you can't, when you hear that sound, it's dry. That's when you can paint it, leave it again for another half a day or day to let the paint soak in and dry off. Um, and then you can start using them. That's great, Jackie. Um, thank you so much now for showing all of that today. It was really lovely. I have to say, I've had a very relaxing last hour just watching that. It's very nice. Good. And well That's done to great. everyone who uh, joined us and, and has been getting very busy for the last hour working away with those. And we can't wait to see the pictures, as Jackie said. So please do send them in. We'd love to see them. Um, for anyone who is around next Thursday at three o'clock, we have another Get Ireland Making workshop and that is with little gem puppets and we're going to be making some uh, personality puppets at three o'clock so i've put in the link for anyone that would like to join us and otherwise all the details are on our facebook page for dcci uh, or design across council ireland and um, i think that's everything i don't see any other questions coming in just a couple, lots of thank yous and um, thanks again now jackie so Yes, as I said, this will be up on the YouTube page if anyone wants to go back. I think there's hours and hours of fun to be had with the clay. Yeah, you won't stop. You, you're, you'll be addicted now. You won't stop. You'll keep, you'll keep at it. I think, yeah, there'll be a, a lot a run of clay going around now for the next while. Everyone will be out for it. No, it's some lovely ideas. I think uh, posting cards at the moment, especially, is yeah. such a lovely one. Yeah. And thank you to the Crafts Council and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And um, I'm just delighted that you're getting a little bit of creativity in. Thank you. Thanks so much. Brilliant, Jackie. Listen, thanks again to everyone. So we'll, we'll leave it there and hopefully you can join us next week as well. Um, but yeah, everyone have a lovely afternoon and a lovely weekend. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.